account is now in Firestore, you can get the account of all matching documents from a query. So let's break it all down. Count works just like any other query in Firestore. You start out by getting a instance to Firestore, and then you create a reference to a collection. And then from there, you can use one of the brand new count functions in the SDK, and that's going to be named differently per platform. Here on the web, it's called get count from server. Now all I have to do is await that function, and I will get back the count property within the snapshot. And from there, if I want to do something like pagination, well, that's easy as just a little bit of math. Now you might be wondering, well, does count work with queries? And yeah, of course it does. So let's write a query that returns expenses that are less than $20 and that contain the category of either household or clothing. And we can see that the cost or the amount is less than before, but it works just the same as the previous example. So this is my absolute favorite part of count, and that's using count with collection group queries. So what's a collection group query? Well, it's a bit of an advanced topic, and if you want to learn more, we have a great video on it, so just check the link in the description. But all you need to know for now is that a collection group query is a special type of query that allows you to query across all collections that contain the same name. And this is specifically helpful with subcollections. Take a look at this data structure for shopping carts. I'm using a sub collection to structure the items within a shopping cart for a user. And this makes it really easy to get back the user's items without a query. But what if we wanted to know the count of items across all shopping carts using the same query as before, where the price is less than $20 and the category is either clothing or household? Well, we can keep the same query as before, but instead of using a collection, we can use a collection group with the name of shopping cart items. Now, instead of one single user, it will query across all sub collections with the name of shopping cart items. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, what's the pricing model for count? And I want to start off by saying that this is the most likely part of this video to be out of date. And I recorded it as of December 12th, 2022. So if you want to stay up to date with the pricing information, then check the link in the description and that will keep you up to date. But for now, the way that the pricing model works is that you are billed one read per every 1000 documents matched. And that means if you write a query and it returns back 1,000 documents charged as one read. Now, there is no such thing as fractional reads. So if you pull back 1,500 documents for the count, that will count as two reads. And the same thing works if it matches less than 1,000. It still counts as one read. And this is just so you know that currently the pricing model is set up that it's not every single document that it matches counts as a read. So if it's a thousand documents, not a thousand reads, it's for every 1000 counts as one read. If you want more Firestore and count videos, then make sure to leave me a comment and tell me what kind of content you want to see. And if you found this video helpful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And that's all for the fundamentals of Firestore and count. And I will see you all next time.